Hey guys, it's Kim here and welcome to Valiant Hearts The Great War. Now, I first saw this game at E3 2014 this year, you may have seen Hannah and I put out a video on it, and I must confess, I did not know anything about it when I first saw it, and when I played it, I was utterly hooked. Valiant Hearts The Great War, as you may guess from the title, focuses on World War One, and it is developed by Ubisoft Montpellier, and it commemorates World War One, which is coming up to its 100 year anniversary. It started on July 28th in 1914, so a very sensitive subject right now. And I must admit, I recently have been paying a lot of attention because um, in the UK at least, there has been a lot of focus on the 100th year um, anniversary and the 70th year anniversary of the Normandy landings, um, which was earlier in June. And so I thought I would love to give this game a go because I, I don't know if calling it a game is really the thing. From what I've seen of it and what I've read about it, this really is almost like a living history lesson and a good commemoration of the men and women who lost their lives in the Great War. So I've got plenty more information for you, but let us get started. August 1st, 1914. After the assassination of Prince Franz Ferdinand of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the German Empire declares war on Russia. Because of established alliances, France is preparing for conflict. A few hours after the announcement of the general mobilization, German civilians living in France are asked to leave the country. Karl is one of them. A few days after Karl was deported, the war was hungry for more and took away Emil as well. A heavy-hearted Emil was called up to fight and left the farm for San Miel. Like so many others, he had no idea what fate had in store for him. So I think we can tell already that um, this is going to be quite an emotional title there. From the gorgeous artwork to the beautiful music, and obviously the subject matter too. So things have begun a little bit differently to our demo in uh, at E3. So here we go. All throughout this game, one thing Ubisoft were very keen to point out was that they have really stuck to the facts on this. This isn't sort of like a Call of Duty, you know, taking the facts and then throwing in a bit of pinch of salt, um, you know, creative, <laughs> creative salt. Um, so they're very keen to, to kind of have the historical facts here. And part of this are these recolorized photos that we, we will unlock as we play. Um, now these were all recolorized, as you can see there, as part of a TV program called Apocalypse World War One um, and there are various facts about um, about the war beginning with perhaps the most uh, important which is how it started so June 28th 1914 Archduke Franz Ferdinand yes he was an actual human being he wasn't just a band heir to the Austrian Hungarian throne was assassinated in Sarajevo as a result of the chain of diplomatic and military alliances in place the event launched Europe into a con um, into an armed conflict that, with the involvement of the colonies, took on a global dimension. August 1st, Germany declared war on Russia. 
August 3rd, Germany declared war on France. August 4th, Britain declared war on Germany. August 11th and 12th, France and Britain declared war on Austria Hungary. Hungary. So I'm not going to read all of these out because obviously we'll be here all day. But what I am going to do is I'm going every time we unlock one of these, I will flick onto them. So if you want to read more, then pause the video and read in your own time. Obviously as well, you can pick up this game yourself. Um, I highly recommend it. It's an absolutely beautiful game. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the TV program later. But for now, let us get back to Emile. So there you go, the French motto, Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité. Which I believe is freedom, equality and brotherhood. Apologies to French speakers who will uh, correct me. So there we are as Emile kitted up for the French army. Okay, we need to get our horn. Need the horn? uniform there is very snazzy. Good use of the three colours. Up we go. Looks like we're going to go through some training here. Here we go. Fire in the hole. Whoops, totally missed with that one. No. <laughs> I think I've got to get it. There we go, that should do it. There was um, an amazing line in um, one of Terry Pratchett's novels, and I'm trying to remember which one. I think it was Monstrous Regiment. It was when Polly was about to fight a soldier for the first time and she was wishing she had more training because she started humanising everyone. So she said, some mother's son, some sister's brother, some lad who'd followed for the shilling and first new suit. If only she'd been trained. If only she had a few weeks stabbing straw men until she could believe that all men were made of straw. And then it, I, I remember it was because she was about to protect one of her um, fellow soldiers. And she says, perhaps that, because she could see a soldier coming, uh, coming along. And she goes, perhaps that's why men did it. You didn't do it to save the duchess or countries. You, di you killed the enemy to stop him killing your mates, that they in turn may save you. And that's, that's something that really struck me from reading Monstrous Regiment. And if you haven't read Monstrous Regiment, I recommend you do. Onwards now. For the French National Anthem. I always thought the French National Anthem was quite good. It's very jolly. It's a lot better than God Save the Queen, which is a bit of a funereal dirge. My dear Marie, we are on our way to Paris. The atmosphere here is strangely cheerful. I hope that the harvest goes well. Rely on our neighbours for help. They've always been gracious and charitable people. I'll write again as soon as I get my assignment. Please kiss my little grandson for me. So here we go to Paris. At the train depot in Paris, trying to reach his regiment at Platform 21, Emile would meet the man he would soon fight alongside. The man who would come to be his truest friend. What is going on here? Hmm. <laughs> Where's the other... the other bit of smoke then? Let's see. What if I chuck this up there? Oh, what's this? Ah, so these are collectibles, um, so it looks like I've missed one. So again, another layer to everything. German helmet. The legendary pointed German helmet, the Pickelhauser. Hauser? I may have said that wrong, I apologise Germans. Was used by German forces in 1916, until 1916, and was then replaced by much more efficient steel helmets. The different parts of the helmet, including the point for defence against sabre attack, were adapted according to rank, origin and weapon used by soldier. On some helmets the point was rounded. 
magnificent looking helmet. Um, yeah, so these are uh, collectibles that we can pick up as well. So, how am I going to get up there? So I can't... Okay, so he would like some food. So there is... Maybe if I just give him... Can I give you that? Oh. Sorry, he does not want red wine, he wants white wine. You have white wine. So I've swiped your white wine. Sorry. <laughs> Here you go. Thumbs up! So we can go over here. It's over here. He won't let me up. <laughs> okay, so maybe if I make some music happen. Alright, okay, so we've got to figure out the right order. So first with the drums. No. Trombone. No, okay, so drums. Trombone. Clarinet. Trumpet. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Just have a little listen. Cadulest. Train station of the east. Okay. So now I'm here. And I can pull this. And they will leave him alone. Right, let's dismount. French guys, really good at baguettes and cheese. One thing I love when I'm out there, freshly baked Thank baguette. You. I'm free. Where are you from? Good luck, my August 21st, 1914. Emil's regiment was sent to fight against the 71st German Division, led by Baron von Dorf. The general cheer of the first hours dissipated into the fear of first combat. Right, looks like we're leading the regiment. So I believe that the American guy that we just met is someone we're going to play as later on. But for now, let's lead the first assault. Charge. Oh, oh my god. Well, yeah, let's hang back from that. So here we go, here we go. Everyone seems to be doing well so far. Although Emil is getting very tired. Come on, Emil. Wait, no! God. This is awful. I love that art style though, how it shifted from kind of the first like, isn't this a bright, beautiful battle? And now the color palette has changed, the music has changed, everything's darker and more violent. Which exactly, must have been exactly like going into war. First you're full of your country's pride and your passion. And you think, you know, we're gonna sort this out and be home by Christmas. But the reality is exactly this. That can't be it for a meal already. Can it? Is that August Carl? Emile. Miss Marie Chayon. Private Emile Chayon from the 150th Infantry Regiment was wounded by enemy fire on August 21st. He has been captured by the enemy. Hopefully, you shall receive news from him soon.